the seven most common reasons why you might be failing your finances and how to quickly and easily fix this. Mama TV. I am financial planner Canna Campbell. Before we begin today's video, number one, please make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and that notification bell is switched on because I am publishing a fresh video for you every Thursday afternoon. Number two, please make sure you are following me on my Instagram account at Sugar Mama TV because this is where I provide you with all the immediate access links to the all of my content the moment it goes live, which includes my podcast Sugar Mama's Fireplay, which is published every Monday morning. And then of course my new podcast with the guys from Fear and Greed, which is published every Wednesday morning and it is called How Do They Afford That? All right, so today I wanna to talk to you about the seven most common reasons why I see people fail their finances, but more importantly, how to quickly and easily fix this so that you can see your finances going from strength to strength where you never look back and you keep setting yourself more and more exciting and empowering financial goals in your life. Now I'm going to share with you these seven things that I see all the time, but I'm going to share with you strategies, solutions, and hacks to quickly and easily fix this. Now you'll also hear as I go through these different things that some of these even apply to me. So some of these strategies I use myself to fix my own financial well-being and help enhance my own financial journey. So let's get started. So number one, the most common reason why I see people fail their finances, and that is simply they don't have a financial goal. Goal. I will ask someone, what's your financial goal? And they'll say to me, um, uh, to be better with money. I'm sorry, that's actually not really a financial goal. It's a wish, it's a hope. Goals need definition, they need clarity, they need direction, and they need purpose. And when you do this properly, the benefits both mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially flow out into your life. When you have a great financial goal that you're excited on and about achieving and working on, you have a new spring to your step. You bounce out of bed, you're empowered, you're inspired, you're motivated to achieve that goal. So what I recommend you do to quickly and easily fix this is take it nice and slow and nice and simple. Ask yourself this question. What is the one financial goal that you would like to achieve before the end of the year? Now, whatever goal hits you in the head, run with that. And stick for the meantime with that one simple goal. Ideally, having is a short-term goal. And make sure you put all your energy and focus into achieving that goal before you move on on to the next goal. Now, as you learn to fall in love with your goal and get excited and start seeing the progress in achieving that goal, you can start thinking about and setting other additional financial goals in your life with different time frames, such as medium and long-term goals. But to keep it simple and to make sure you have an immediate call to action, keep your first financial goal very simple and short-term. The second reason why I see people fail financially, and that is because they are frozen with fear, anxiety, and are completely overwhelmed. Now, there are a lot of people that can fall into this category at various times in their lives, but guess what? There's a really quick, easy solution to overcome this, and that is to set a budget. Now, a budget does not tell you where to spend your money. It just lets you see where your money actually goes so that you have clarity, you have direction, you have a sense of accountability and an understanding where your money goes so that you get back into the driving seat and you decide where your money goes because you're able to see the financial wastage. So what I recommend you do is set some time aside, maybe this weekend, and write down all of your living expenses, cross-referencing against your credit card statements, if you use a credit card, and your bank statements so that you can actually see exactly where your money goes. And to make sure that your budget is as accurate as possible, go back to 12 months worth of transactions so you can really see what the entire cost of your year really looks like. And you can get and capture all of those ad hoc irregular expenses such as Christmas time, car rego, 
any sort of quarterly or biannual expenses that also come up in your life and write them all down. This will allow you to see where you're wasting money, but also you can then use that financial wastage by making changes in your life and then putting that newfound savings towards your financial goals. Having a budget is your friend. It's one of the most powerful tools to help you get better about money, but also feel better about money in your life. Reason number three why you might be failing financially, and this is quite a deep one, and it's one that even applied to me in my own financial life, and that is you have a deeply imprinted subconscious belief within your body and your mind and in your heart that you are not worthy of abundance. You are not worthy of being financially fit, financially well. Now, I am here to tell you that is not the case at all. You are more than worthy of having financial abundance in your life. Mindset is everything. So what I recommend you do to explore this is grab a copy of my book, Mindful Money, and the first three chapters of this book really explore and dive deep into your money mindset. You ask yourself all these key questions about what happened in your childhood, what happened with relationships with money, what does money represent in your life, and so you can really explore it and reset and reprogram yourself for financial abundance. Now these uh, subconscious conscious beliefs can turn up into in so many weird and wonderful ways and it's something that you do actually need to work on on a regular basis. Now to share this with you, I actually had one of these subconscious beliefs myself. I thought I was only worthy of earning up to a certain amount of money in my life. Now, when I did the work and found this imprinted deep within me, I was able to explore it and challenge it dissect it and then break it and it has been profound the changes in my life I've really had some incredible breakthroughs and shifts in my earning capacity now a great question to ask yourself as you discover these things is and these beliefs about yourself is does this serve me in any positive way in your life and if your answer is no well that is time to let go and release any limiting self-conscious negative beliefs you have within yourself and bring in abundance prosperity and excitement and pleasure into your life where financial well-being is something you experience every day in your life. Reason number four why you might be failing in your life financially and that is you are self-sabotaging because you believe that having more money in your life will make you more materialistic. Now I know some people will be watching this going really I could I'm worried that I might be become materialistic and of course this doesn't apply to everyone but I come across a lot of people who think having money is something that is very materialistic. However I want to make sure that you are being really real, really honest, and really smart with this type of statement if it's something you believe. When you have more money in your life, it magnifies what is already there. And you think about it, you're only going to become more materialistic with money if you use money in a materialistic way. When we have more money in our lives, we can spend more money on experiences. We can spend more money on education. We can spend more money on better quality food and healthcare. We can give more money to charity. Now, if you ask me, None of those spending habits or ways of using money sounds materialistic whatsoever. So if you have that belief, please crush it. It's stupid and it's only holding you back. Reason number five, and this is very similar to reason number four, and that is that you believe that money goes against spirituality. You are someone who is very spiritual, but you feel that money is toxic when it comes to the spirituality and the laws of vibration and attraction in your life. Well, all right, again, I'm going to really explore this and dissect it. One of the best selling books around the world is called The Secret. It talks about the laws of abundance, the laws of vibration, the laws of attraction, the laws of gratitude, which are all very similar. But guess what? When you have more money in your life, you simply have more energy. Your vibration is a lot stronger and a lot more powerful and just like I use that example with the word materialism about what you can bring into your life you can choose to use money in a very spiritual way you can give more money to charity you can spend more money on education you have more time to be able to help other people around you you have the time to be able to share your teachings with other people around you and money is simply energy when we are buying something it's just an exchange of energy an exchange of vibrations now this is something that I really believe in firmly and I, if you like I can actually do a video completely dedicated to the spirituality of 
money. So if this is something of interest, please make sure you comment in the video comment box below because it's something I've been toying with for a really long time. And I myself am an incredibly spiritual person and I have always harnessed the harmony of spirituality and money in my life. And, and let me tell you this, it is perfectly safe to be spiritual and wealthy at the same time. Now to bring it back to practicality. Reason number six why you might be failing your finances and that is you don't know where to start. You know that you need to get better with money but you just don't know what you should be doing first. Should you be writing a goal? Should you be doing a budget? Should you be sorting out your superannuation? Should you be learning about shares and investment properties? All right, this is what I recommend you do. Start with the basics. Don't try and run before you can walk. Learn about what a budget is. Learn about what's important to you. Learn about your money mindset before you delve into any of the deep, hard, complicated stuff and take it at your own pace. Your financial journey is not something that happens and starts overnight. It's something you slowly and steadily build up over time and as you get more and more educated around money, you, it gets much easier and much faster along the way because you can start to see what is right for you and what is not right for you. So start with the absolute basics and a brilliant way to start is something like the thousand dollar project, which is where I was able to build up a six figure diversified investment portfolio literally by $1,000 at a time. Now, how simple, how easy does that sound? This is a great place for you to begin. And once you begin, I promise you it's addictive. You'll never look back and you will go from strength to strength as you watch your financial well-being literally improve every single day. And then the seventh reason you might be failing your financial well-being, and that is you're telling yourself you are simply too young or too old to take your financial well-being seriously. You think it's too early in your life to begin, that you should be living your life and having all these amazing, wonderful experiences, or you are telling yourself it's too late, you're too old. Well, let me tell you this, that does not serve you in any way possible. If you are telling yourself you are too young, you are missing out on very valuable opportunities and the opportunity of time as well. My children who are range between nine and one, each have their own very, very small investment portfolio portfolio and by using the benefit of time with regular investing on an ongoing basis, a set and forget, reinvesting all of their dividends of their investment portfolio, I am going to seriously help them set themselves up financially where they are earning passive income as they enter in the big wide world when they finish school or university or whatever they choose as a tertiary education option. So it is never ever too early and I have to say I'm someone who started investing when I was about 18, 19 and I am so grateful that I did this at the time. Yes, I did have to make some sacrifices along the way, but it is so well worth it because I have a lot less financial stress in my life. Now, if you're on the flip side and you're thinking, no, I'm way too old, I've missed that boat. Can I, there, there's no chance I can start investing or taking my financial well-being seriously. Again, that is simply not true. I had played an amazing podcast, which I will link in the video description box below, where Sharon, in this short period of about 18 months, has been able to set herself up financially so that she could afford to retire and retire comfortably and retire for the rest of her life, not needing to worry about money money. Now tying back to the thousand dollar project, I started this investment portfolio uh, eight, eight and a half years ago and as I said I literally hustled one thousand dollars at a time and that portfolio is actually worth a gross figure including a small margin loan of two hundred and thirty thousand dollars paying a passive income of over sixteen thousand dollars a year. Now I was in my mid thirties at the time so and I literally did not take a single dollar out of my savings or a dollar out of my salary. I did all these weird and wonderful ways to simply come up with a thousand dollars at a time. So if I can do that in say eight years not touching any salary, not touching any savings and you can use your savings and you can use your salary, imagine what you can do in eight years. So please know that is completely holding yourself back from achieving any greatness in your life with that type of mindset or attitude. Stop it immediately and start realizing what you can do and it starts with setting yourself a very simple short term goal. All right, everyone, that is enough for me. As I said, I'd love to know what you think about my idea of doing a video around the spirituality of money. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a really long time. And before I wrap up this video, please make sure you are number one, you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, the notification bell is switched on, and you are following me on Instagram at TV. I will link everything below for you. Ciao for now.